So getting started today, we are going to ramp up the power generation. That's right. We're going to dive into nuclear craft and uh, hopefully not get too radioactive. I think we should be fine, though, even, even though nuclear craft does have some radioactive aspects to it. So right off the bat, I did get this quest completed, I guess, while I was coming up with the idea for today's video. Um, we got the since last death. I guess it's based on a time ticks, probably. And uh, I, I'm going to take it. We got an unclaimed black market container and another creative modifier, which is really nice. And let's hope we get lucky with this. Dragon's Breath. Not bad. That's actually pretty good because I actually <laughs> didn't get any Dragon's Breath when I fought the dragon. So that's actually really nice. I was looking at how much uranium I have. And I noticed that to get this to work, we needed to mine out the beneath. And I might need to go back to the beneath. And so what I'll do is I'll probably just have two quarries running and be mining up the beneath as we go. Uh, but getting getting started, here's some of the things that we are going to need in order to make our first reactor and make an, a, a, a really decent, efficient one that should be able to generate roughly a um, thousand RF per tick and more. Right. And it, it really won't take that much. Um, so we do need to make these alloy furnaces. A lot of things that I'm going to be um, able to automate. So right now we have tons of lead, but I don't have really any graphite and the ability to get graphite. Well, all you got to do is take um, some regular coal, I believe. Let's see the recipe over here. Graphite dust. It's it should be coming from coal. Don't know why I'm not being able to see graphite dust. Am I missing something? There it is, pulverized coal in a manufacturing. I was like, wait, I'm missing something. So in a manufactory, which is really easy to make, right? Um, let's go ahead and get that thing processed. I'm going to have to set this up for automation like right away. That's going to be the, the major thing um, is getting these set up. For the manufactory, we're going to get that set up with some coal. Um, we will take pulverized coal. Basically, I'm going to create a recipe for it. Let's see, <laughs> industrializing. Now there was two ways. I'm still probably going to go the other way with power. Um, I'm going to go with nuclear craft right now um, and get a little bit of power, but we can generate a lot of power as well with um, immersive engineering, which is another great mod. It does. It, it requires a lot of space though. This can be nice and compact. So our machine at first is going to be pretty slow. So what we want to do is of course upgrade it for right now. I'm just going to do a power upgrade or a speed upgrade. I was going to speed it up pretty significantly even with five you can put 10 in here i think 10 is the max and as you can see it goes really quick still not able to compete with this as this thing maxed out is insane um <laughs> with all of its max augments and stuff it's an insane processing beast same with the uh, pulverizer over here um so speaking of the pulverizer um i do need some graphite so i need this graphite dust and i also have the bar so right now i just have it auto crafting some graphite but I will need to um, just make like a stack of this stuff for right now as well. So I can go ahead and start this. This is going to need to pulverize coal, which I have it done doing over here. And then it will go back over here and feed this thing. So like I said, I probably need some more speed upgrades. And I think just automating the process of this, we're going to have to separate the grinders and crush up some quartz and, you know, things like that. I don't think I have like extras laying around of the crush up quartz. Um, as for this setup, yeah, requires all that. But yeah, we're getting pretty close. Um, what I need, I just need a bunch of graphite. That's going to allow me to be able to make some of the machines. That's going to allow us to start processing LEU um, 235 fuel. Because this is going to be one of the first fuels that we start working with. And this is going to be the 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 big daddy that's going to get us the uh, the good amount of power. So um, I, I'm, I'm really... I'm, I'm really waiting for this and then we're ready to go. So I just spent some more time setting some things up. I went ahead and did uh, or went ahead and got the uh, alloy furnace, even though I don't think I'm going to need it. If I do need to set it up, I might set it up in here along with the rest of this setup. Um, but I did go ahead and extend my alloy smelter. And this right here is creating some tough allo alloy for me. So uh, basically, I created um, two patterns here. I also went ahead and set up automation for uh, steel. And now we have the ability to make some of this. So really, you just need to make yourself. Let's look over here. Some ferroboron, which is going to be a mixture of boron and steel. 
and then you also need lithium. Now make sure you can only get this stuff from the beneath. So that's the only place you can get this. So um, if you're wondering how to get this started, you really have to go to the, or have to unlock the beneath, which does take a little bit of time and quarry it, which uh, takes a little bit of time. So now that we have this, I also looked inside here and I did notice that um, there is depleted um, the HECF oxide, which is Californium, I do believe. This stuff is, yeah, it's depleted Californium, which is the top tier fuel <laughs> in, uh, in this pack. And it is very expensive. Um, but man, that can generate tons of power <laughs> with that depleted. Um, so what I'm working for right now is a isotope separator. And this is going to require a little bit of this. I think we can actually make it at this point. Um, so let's go in and see. Yes, I can make that. And let's go ahead and throw it together. I need some basic plates and isotope separator. Voila. Let's also get a point. And we're going to give this bad boy some power. Um, I am going to set it up down here just for right now. I don't think there needs to be any kind of like major automation going on for it for right now, uh, but it does need some power. It needs to be set up. So what am I going to start putting in here? Um, well, that's where uranium that we've been mining up comes in handy so we have tons of uranium right now and we even have more just laying around and i think yeah this comes from the beneath as well and it's in vast quantities there um it should go in here this is the alloy furnace what did i do place the wrong machine down isotope separator there we go and so i'm gonna throw the uranium in here and add some speed upgrades like these speed upgrades we have over here just to show you how fast this will actually go um, and once we get full speed upgrades and power upgrades, this thing actually goes pretty fast. And what we're going to try and get is enough to make an LEU 235 while we're working on everything else. This should produce it pretty quickly. And as you can see, to, we need um, 235 uranium, which to get this is a combination of the tiny clumps. And you'll notice um, right here that we are getting the tiny clumps of 235. And to get the, and everything else we need is the uh, 238 right here, which is what we were getting in quite large quantities. So a stack of this should get you a couple. Um, so it'll get you a couple of the uh, LEU, which actually lasts a little bit of time, especially with the generator that we're going to be working towards building. So something that I actually need to get started on just so we can make the fission controller is the magnesium... Uh, <laughs> Magnesium Diboride Alloy. Man, what a, a mouth, what a tongue twister. Um, this right here, so this requires magnesium and also boron mixed together, which uh, we can just throw right here. I think, you know what, this might actually require ingot form if it's going to be this way. So I probably need to go ahead and get those cooked up. Let's go ahead and just grab a stack right here. There we go. That'll get processed. And that'll give us the magnesium we need. I think I'm almost ready. The only thing I need is the advanced plating here. So, and then we uh, just need to build the uh, fission reactor casings. And that's about it. And I think I have, I, I went on the Discord for Nuclear Craft, and you can find tons of great resources here. There's even a bot that will auto generate Nuclear Craft builds for you. Um, it's super fun. But there's an awesome one on here that I think I'm going to try and make that should generate about 2.7 thousand RF per tick. And uh, that's exactly what I want. I think that is where it's at. So we just need four of these. Then we need to make these little rod things. And voila, we have the fission controller. Um, let's go ahead and complete these. I don't know if they'll give me anything I need. Oh my gosh, a quintuple nether star sandwich. We just, that also unlocked another quest for us. Unlockables? That was this thing right here. I don't know. I do, Don't I have to turn this in? Like what? Check mark. Unlocked from completing a secret. I guess this is the reward though. I don't know what the, uh, the, the task or reward is for this. But it says another star sandwich along from completing a secret. Wow. That is, uh very very tasty apparently so now that we got that we got all that out of the way um let's go ahead 
and I just need to make enough casings. I'm going to make a three by three reactor, which means the outside border is going to basically be a five by five minus the all the edges and corners because we do not need the corners. And you can also use glass too. Um, I'm probably not going to simply because it's going to be a bit more expensive to use the glass one, uh, but it will look just fine. And we're going to create a three by three. You don't have to do this. You can actually make even smaller ones starting off. But this one is going to work just fine for the uh, the LEU 235. So I pretty much have everything ready to build this machine. Um, I have a little bit more of the fission reactor just because I had them set to auto craft. Um, but uh, it gives you, you know, like an even amount that it, it rounds to. Um, but anyways, I want to place this guy right in the wall here and it should fit perfectly. So what I need uh, as far as space, let's see, it looks like a shovel here. Um, I'm just going to need this to go back a little bit. And this to go down, because it's going to be the floor. And then the wall here just needs to be broken out a little bit. Because right in here is going to be facing this way. There's going to be casings here. Let's go ahead and just kind of plan this out. So right down here is going to be all of the fission casings. Same goes here. Like I said, it's a 3x3, three three, but the outer walls is not... I'm gonna go just like this and uh, we can actually start to get an idea of what the inside is actually going to look like now so what I have here is four tin coolers I have one glowstone graphite blocks and then reactor cells and some lapis coolers these are all pretty easy to make right off the bat and like nothing um, is really needed for these all right so there's our four actually I need to make four Four more of these, then four more tin. Now that I think about it. I thought I had all the right amount ready to go, but then, of course, that never happens. So we need to make um, four of those. Need more steel. And we'll get that processed up. Um, and then while we wait, I can go ahead and finish getting my lapis coolers. So, yeah, this is basically the recipe for lapis coolers. If you didn't already know, it's just lapis blocks. And I need four of those. And then four more tin ones. So I'm just waiting for the steel. I'll go ahead and build the rest of it out, though, while I wait. So the tin is going to go just like this. And there's actually going to be an air block right here, which is going to be just fine. Um, and then right here we'll go the graphite and we actually need reactor cells the the amount of cells you have is what stores the um, like the the fuel so keep that in mind as well and then right here cell cell there's gonna be four cells and graphite with that air block and then the glowstones actually gonna go right here and now we're just waiting for our tin so let's make sure I have this and I'm going to go ahead and make the tin one. There we go. Perfect. And now we have everything we, we need. So I'm going to go ahead and place the tin here. And like I said, leave the air block there. Tin and that. And then we just cover the face with this. Like that. And then I'm going to place my controller right here. And uh, it says right here, the cells are all there. I believe this should work. Um, all we got to do is place the fuel in and flip the lever. Now, I am getting a little bit of rad from this, but I think overall we should be okay. There's 14, so that should give us enough to make 14 LEU fuels. And we can take these. Let's make a lever. And we're about to have a lot of power. A lot of power. So as you can see, it just consumed that. We flip this on, and what we should monitor is our heat. And as you can see, the power is building incredibly fast. And we're pushing uh, about 19... We're pushing almost 2,000 RF per tick. And the fuel's going to last us 15 minutes apiece. Which is real time. Real time 15 minutes. Um, and our efficiency is at 400%. We're looking really good. Like, that's really good and our heat's in the negative which means we're not going to have any issues so there we go and we're producing almost 2000 rf per tick under pretty cheap resources um and what to do with all this power well 
I think we should take a plug. Let's go ahead and make a plug. Should have all the resources, I think. Make ourselves a plug. And just slap this plug on the bottom here. And uh, connect it to our network. And we have that much power now going where we want it to go. Now, what I can do is take a point and here's where we're going to make our quarry go a bit faster than what it currently is. Right now, it's set up to this. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And I'm going to place this here. And we can actually um, set a limit on how much power can be transferred here. So um, I can say I only want 2,000 RF per tick going towards this, which would be double what it had. And if we set that, now it's only going to send 2,000 RF per tick. Um, we could send the max if we wanted to, but I don't think that is going to be a good idea since we're really only producing 2,000 out of this bad boy right here. Um, so, I recommend having at least some kind of buffer. I mean, for right now, I guess I could be giving it a bit more. Let's just go ahead and uh, disable the limit. And it's going to give it as much as it possibly can. This thing is just going to be flying. Look at that. It's, it's being given 20,000 RF per tick. And it still isn't enough to compete. It's still buffering. But it's going to generate tons and tons of items for us. At least while our battery lasts that has, what, 25 million in it? That is depleting. Or, no, it has 50 million. It's just depleting really quickly. So I want to kind of take this power that we have and I want to put it to some good use. I know that our, our armor will automatically be repaired with mending and things like that and also will be charged automatically because of our flux controller. But it, it's not fully upgraded. So we still have some dark steel upgrades to do this. And I have auto crafting now. So it's pretty easy for me to just make some capacitors. And I think the upgrades to get to this just like require. I think this is the um, not the last one, but the next one up is going to require four octatic capacitors. And that puts us pretty high up there. And to get to the next tier, um, which is in powered four. Right? Is that empowered four? Empowered five. Yeah, empowered five. To get us to that, we need a tormented head, which requires bottles of water and solarium and a slice of splice, which isn't even that hard to get either. So I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the rest of this stuff and uh, we can go ahead and put these things together and yeah, just get them processing. Like I even already have all the solarium needed and uh, I already have the capacitors ready to go. So we just need four. Boom. Click that auto start. It's as easy as that. I really love that. So to get the tormented heads, we're actually already really set up for this. We just throw this stuff in here. Bam, and we are good to go. Look at that. Doesn't take much at all, actually, <laughs> to get these tormented heads. And I kind of want to fight a dragon, and I want to see how powerful we actually are with this armor. Because I know this armor can be pretty powerful, but we were actually getting one shot killed last time we fought the dragon. And also, I want to see if this sword is any better. It does 19 damage, but... It can do better, right? And it's not even the the you know craziest sword in this pack, but it is one of them. So it's just something that I kind of want to test out. Also, I have no experience. That's because uh, there's always been a bug where if you go between dimensions, yeah, your experience bar just like disappears for some reason. I have no idea why it does that. But anyways, I have to activate all these and use some experience. So I might have to go and grab some more. For each one of these they do use a lot of experience so i was looking and i realized i can actually take this armor to empowered five and i'm wondering if that is specifically yeah the ender plate itself because that looks like it does take empowered five but this does not this only takes it to this level so that's kind of interesting to know so that means i should probably just make this armor right it requires this, which uh, is not too much. I don't know. Let's see how crazy powerful this is just by itself. We're going to go fight a dragon. I think at this point we are... What's our damage reduction? 85% of the damage is absorbed by the power in our suit. Wow. So that's a lot um, already. Um, and let's just go ahead and take a dragon on. Let's see. I'm also going to keep my cow pet. So diamond... Take a couple of diamond and dirt. Just so we have that nice regeneration while we're fighting things. 
And then we'll also have the uh, Bounty Hunter's Feast as well. And I kind of already know where a dragon's located, so... And it's actually pretty close to the base. So let's go take this thing on. All right, so here's the dragon. And I mean, I'm just gonna go go right for it. Like, go... Go right for this fella. All right, he's gonna get a couple of pop shots at me. Take this, like, several thousand health down. Not doing any damage right yet, but he hasn't shot any fireballs at me. How about our bow? How's our bow do? 28 each. Actually, the knockback's quite ridiculous. That does a lot of damage in itself. Oh! Okay. That was a little easier than I thought. Camouflage die from primitive mobs. Oh, oh, we must have killed something. Okay. Yeah, that was a little easier than I thought. Okay. <laughs> I guess our bow does some incredibly crazy damage between that and everything else. Yeah, I guess dragons are really not a threat anymore. Which uh, is good. Now, there is a dragon though in the beneath that uh, is maybe a little bit more powerful. Don't know. But as far as loot goes in here, yeah, there's there's never really that anything that great. And honestly, the gold itself is not that great either. <laughs> I mean, you get a little bit of gold, but it's literally just a little bit of gold. Yeah, a little, a little bit more gold there. All right, I guess we can go back and uh, well, good to know that we don't take much damage anymore. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.